this needs to be one or the other. Either way, I am innocent. Um, if this was a public area, then I had every right to sit there. Um, if this was not a public area, then there was no public alarm, which is required by the statute for, for in, order to, um, in order to even prosecute me. <coughs> so in either case, I am not guilty of any crime. There is not one instance, as shown on video, where the officer said that I was under arrest until well after I was carried away. And this is also reflected by the witness testimony. In other words, I was not carried away because I had broken the law. I was carried away because the officers simply wanted to remove me. This is not how officers of the peace are supposed to treat the people not how they're supposed to be, treat the people at all, under any circumstances. <coughs> Officer Sooto also testified that the mayor was sitting down at the time that I approached, where the video and the witness testimony clearly shows him shaking hands and interacting with people. Officer Sooto testified that he could say for a fact that he never told me that there were no charges <coughs> and that I was not told <coughs> that there were no charges after the time that I was arrested, <coughs> which he testified occurred prior to them first attempting to lift me off the ground. The video shows him saying this twice after that time. Twice he said there are no charges. Um, Officer Sooto testified that they were regular, um, that they were there as regular event security, whereas Officer Duarte testified that they were there specifically to uh, deal with um, me and <coughs> with us. So their their testimonies are inconsistent, even though they were from the same unit and arrived together. Um, Officer Sooto testified that he told me um, five times again that he could set something up with the mayor, which was not true. Um, as shown on video of the entire interaction, it, he never, he did not say it. Secondly, um, you know, and this is not the time place does not count. Um, this, secondly, even if this were true, even if he did tell me this, it would not have been true. It, it frankly, it, it, it would have been uh, an absolute untruth because he testified that he had he testified that he had not received any such clearance from the mayor. So he is testifying at that point that he is saying something untrue. Um, he, Officer Sooto also testified that he was aware of the Civil Affairs Division. He, was, he testified that he knew what they did, <coughs> and he described it, um, but that they were not called. He testified that Captain Borges, the um, ranking officer at the event, informed them that we would be trying to speak with the mayor and instructed them to guard him from us. <laughs> So, the, uh, apparently, um, when we spoke with Captain Borges, and it is shown on the video that he said that he would respect our rights, either he was not telling the truth, or Officer Soto was not telling the truth. Um, Officer Soto. So <coughs> uh, I'm trying to read my writing. Um, okay, both Officer Sooto and Officer Duarte testified 
that they did not know who any of the people in that general area were. So therefore, they do not know whether those were actual members of the public or officials. Um, and, it's, and the law, I should mention, is very, very clear on that point. <coughs> what I'm being charged with is 711-1101, disorderly conduct which specifically states that a person commits the offense of disorderly conduct if with intent to cause physical inconvenience or alarm by a member or members of the public, so intent to cause physical inconvenience or alarm, <coughs> or recklessly creating a risk thereof, recklessly creating a risk thereof, the person also then and I'm being charged with section A, which says engages in fighting or threatening or in violent or tumultuous behavior, of which I think we've well established that I was not doing any, any of whatsoever. <coughs> um, and uh, that because this, um, as this is uh, being charged as a petty dis misdemeanor, the state would have to prove that it is the defendant's intention to cause substantial harm or serious inconvenience um, or persist in disorderly conduct after reasonable warnings and requests to desist, that those are requests or requests to desist. That did not happen. Every time a request was made, I followed it. When I was told to, um, you know, that there was a problem with blocking the area, I crouched down. When I was told to exit the area, I exited the area and I sat down. Uh, I don't think that there was anything there which fulfilled this. Um, this statute whatsoever and certainly um, was not as required by statute fighting or threatening or violent or tumultuous. Um, this section requires, and this is in, in the commentary on this law, uh, this section requires proof of an intent to cause physical inconvenience or alarm or at least a reckless, a reckless creation of a risk thereof. Um, and a very important point about this <coughs> is that this statute is aimed at actual fights and other behavior te tending to threaten <coughs> the public generally. For this section requires <coughs> public alarm, public alarm, as distinguished from the private alarm which may accompany assault. This is an important point. A person may not be arrested for disorderly conduct as a result of activity which annoys only the police, for example. <coughs> and that also is upheld in that it it may not be something that merely uh, annoys a public official, and we cannot, the state has not established that there was anyone who was a public um, member who was not in such a capacity in that area at any time. Um, and it says that such arguments are merely hazards of the trade, which do not warrant criminal penalties. Um, <coughs> that uh, um, and I should say that this was this was uh, this was per an amendment made um, under Act 136, Session Laws, 1973. Um, in which the offense of disorderly conduct was amended to require an intent to cause physical inconvenience or alarm by members of the public. Um, 
previously the offense merely required an intent to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, but that is not the case under the law as it currently stands. Um, Um, <clears throat> all right. Again, in all of this, it has been well established. There was no fighting, no threatening, no violent, no tumultuous behavior, no reckless behavior of any kind. At all times, it has been well established that I took every um, measure that I could to prevent harm to or inconvenience to anyone. Could I have done better? I'm human. Um, I will easily state, as a as a practitioner of Pono and a practitioner of Ho'opono Pono, um, we all could probably do things with more finesse and style at any given moment. We're all learning. Um, looking back on the situation, perhaps there are a couple of things that I could have done differently, but none of them would have affected whether my actions were legal or not. My actions were never <coughs> in any way illegal, no matter how you look at it. Therefore, um, I am absolutely in no way guilty of any crime. Um, I do want to mention that uh, <coughs> Article 12, Section 7 of the Hawaii State Constitution guarantees my right to practice customary traditions, which would include prayer, especially at a re as reasonably practiced at the time that I was kneeling, not blocking anyone's <coughs> view, and otherwise attempting to be as non-disruptive as possible without going against the <coughs> teaching of my very close mentors, including those who have passed, such as Kavai Puna Prijin, who was the primary organizer of the first mission to protect Ko Olave, and a peacemaker who laid much of the foundational work for the peace between the United States and Hawaii at the United Nations. <coughs> Kamaka Hukilani Mono Hafen, who educated people on every island. Kupuna Tom Maunu Pau, who dedicated his life to peaceful restoration of the practice of our inherent rights to self determination. And also to Kupuna, who are living right now, um, such as Uncle Kekuni Blaisdell, with whom I was in communication during all of this. Um, Uncle Kuching, Clarence Kuching, a former OHA trustee who I ha have um, spoken to with and worked yeah, with on Kanabai Mamalahoi. You're kind of drifting now. Okay, I'm, I'm concluding actually. Um, <coughs> the state constitution PASH decision further specifically states the state does not have the right to regulate the practices of Kanaka Maoli out of existence. My right and the rights of the Hawaiian people to the practice of ea are continual. Ua mau ke ea o ka aina i kupono. Ea, sovereignty, life breath of the land is continued on forever through Pono. E nakanaka, e malama o koi ke akua, a e malama hoi ke kanaka nui, a me kanaka iki, a hele ka ele makule, ka lua kine, a me ki kama, a moe i ke ala, a ohe mea na na e ho pilikia, he no make. Any rebuttals? Uh, very briefly, Your Honor. Uh, it seems that the defense <coughs> conveniently in her um, closing statement puts the onus and responsibility on everyone else. Defendant isn't denying that she blew the conch shell, that she 
knelt down and started uh, praying and chanting. That she, uh, at this point, was between the rows. That at that the program was going on. To me, that shows pure disrespect for the program that was in place. A program for which your own family participates in. That's what. Accordingly, and you know, you say that the conch, yes, I understand a practitioner would never use a conch as a weapon. But you know what? Kamehameha the Great was struck with an implement that was never intended to be used as a weapon either. And he forgave that person. And that is the law of the splintered paddle. Accordingly, I find that the state has proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt. I find you guilty as charged of the crime charged, disorderly conduct, pursuant to HRS 711-1101.